Hello guys, hope you're doing well. Today we'll be talking about intracerebral hemorrhage, so blood in the brain. So I try to make it short and concise and quality. So let's go. So this is a case that usually comes in the exam for final year MDM, MBBS or even FCPS part one or various other exams in the world. So uh, look for uncontrolled hypertension and sudden onset weakness a ct scan showing a hyperdense lesion so this basically equates to intracerebral hemorrhage intracerebral hemorrhage defined as bleeding within the brain parenchyma it is 10 to 15 percent of all strokes so ischemic stroke is much more common predominantly result of chronic hypertension degenerative changes, amyloid disease, or vascular malformations. Risk factor, obviously this is a whole list, you can pause and go through them, but some important are sympathomimetics like cocaine and things like that might uh, give you an intracerebral hemorrhage, heavy alcohol use, anticoagulant therapy, really important. So a lot of people on warfarin or even rivaroxaban and other anticoagulants or antiplatelets including aspirin and clopidogrel among others so uh, these are the people who can get intracerebral hemorrhage due to that ckd migraine post stroke especially if you've got uh, ischemic stroke then you're more likely to have a hemorrhagic stroke in the same region so usually the real blood is released by fugation of small arteries blood spreads between the white matter tracts makes a hematoma there so direct mechanical injury happens and cytotoxic edema really important so the more the edema the more the raised icp icp causes a reduced perfusion of neighboring regions ischemia of neighbor neighboring regions and herniation which is really really dangerous so usually the bleeding already stops after the initial uh, event in the first three hours. So severe hypertension, if left untreated at this time, can cause an expand in the bleed. So cerebral edema develops around it, peaks around two days and resolves around five days or a little longer. Ventricles can be involved and edema causes a, degener a deterioration. So ultimately hematoma is absorbed and cavity remains and surrounding atrophy which you see after uh, a long time in a CT scan of a patient with ICH. Very important site. The most common site is adjacent to the internal capsule putamen and second common is uh, white matter that is of the temporal parietal frontal lobes thalamus is really important as the third most common site cerebellum it can involve it and pawns very very dangerous so here are some slides you can see blood here 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 in the ventricle as well here at pawns here in the cerebellum here in the temporal lobe so this figure explains all so usually uh, the location of the hematoma adjacent structure causes this uh, symptoms so you can relate to that usually really fast acute hypertension is there headache nausea altered state of consciousness and meningism can happen history uh, the purpose is to find out if it's a stroke localize the lesion evaluate if there's any risk factor okay headache vomiting nausea are non-specific non-sensitive so uh, other causes you must also rule them out examination blood pressure is really important gcs is really important signs of bleeding really really important putamen is the most common here you see so the important feature of here a bleed here is hemisensory loss hemiparesis or both caudate so similar symptoms you can read around here thalamic bleeds obviously related to pain and weakness other causes uh, other features include a very poor prognosis here is a thalamic bleed 
pontine and rapidly you go into coma quadriplegia can happen and very dangerous situation cerebellar hemispheres so uh, all the cerebellar symptoms happen so if it is more than three centimeter significant decline happens you do a ct and you do an mri you do a ct early it takes less time freely available a negative ct means there's no bleed mri is more sensitive for old and subacute intraparent camel hemorrhage and can help you find if there was something beneath where the bleed actually happens ct scan let's look at the findings hyperdense finding around here around here in mri in the hyperacute phase t2 hyperintense signal periphery would be hypointense and a rim that is hyperintense T1 and hyperintense in T2. So hyperintense center, periphery that is hyperintense and a hyperintense rim on T2. Let's check this. Yeah, here, here you've got that finding. So goal is basically to stop the bleeding, prevent further decline and prevent recurrence. You do the ABCs, you reverse anticoagulation, decrease blood pressure 20% immediately or less than 160 millimeter of mercury whichever is higher now people are suggesting that 140 systolic might be a good uh, index rather than 160 so libetalol nicardipine night uh, is uh, preferred nitroposide can theoretically increased icp so um, that's not go straight to nitroposide evacuation if uh, there is a imminent transtentorial herniation and if there's a large cerebellar hemisphere hemorrhage should be surgically evacuated you must check the icp keep it between 50 to 70. you can do that with an intraventricular catheter elevate head end to 30 degrees use mannitol or hypertrophic saline you can hyperventilate to decrease the uh, pressure if there's a seizure you use anti-epileptics you treat hyperglycemia treat hypercoagulability okay now if the cerebral hemorrhage is three centimeter or more this is indication of surgery if patient is in the mid-range not fully alert not deeply comatose supratentorial hemorrhage then if there's a life-threatening mass effect you go for it and also if the findings keep on getting worse you can think about it so let's avoid surgery unless it is really necessary complications obviously aspiration dvt you know that about stroke prognosis well a lot of people survive and have good functional status if they survive uh, size of the hematoma is a big factor age level of consciousness at the start edema pneumonia so if the gcs at start is eight or less you've got a bad bad news coming your way if it is more than nine then only 19 percent people lose their lives in the first 30 days those who survive recover very well as stated so this is it about ich i hope you understood took only nine minutes if any questions you can ask them in the comments